well, the fund was not alone in missing the crisis. I think pretty much everybody did as well. Um, but I think what it highlighted was the uh, importance of that the fund should devote more time to looking at the risks out in the, and vulnerabilities out in the global economy. From uh, the perspective of the, the euro area as a whole, it really failed to connect the experience of individual countries with the, the interdependence among them. So there was too much of a country by country analysis. I think the crisis showed that you need to start thinking the unthinkable, but the more important and more difficult thing now is to bring in those external, perhaps unorthodox views onto the substance of surveillance. The good news is that a lot of the pieces have been developed. Uh, people have worked on banking, good models of banking. Uh, people have worked on models of contagion. But it's not going to happen overnight that all of these will be incorporated into the mainstream models. Changing mindsets doesn't happen overnight. It requires a lot of thinking that's not about uh, broad macroeconomic uh, plans, but specific strategies, and particularly in public finance. I see an extremely important role for the fund in the advice it uh, gives. You know, it's a very complex exercise uh, doing multilateral surveillance. It's, 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 it's inherently complex because it's not about conventional macroeconomic analysis. Connecting the dots uh, is, is a, a much more fluid task, requiring uh, some intellectual creativity, but also a very good sense of how things are moving, uh, where capital is slowing, how investors are behaving, how institutional funds are behaving. So thinking through feedback loops is extremely important even for domestic policy. And the fund has been foremost in emphasizing that, and that will, be ha that will have to be part of the policy advice toolkit going forward. One of the fund's strongest comparative advantages is to bring that cross-country cross analysis uh, and viewpoint to the uh, to the assessment of domestic policies. And when you're coming to providing analysis and advice on particular issues that domestic policymakers are struggling with, bringing the experience of how other countries have dealt with the same sorts of issues uh, and what's been more successful, what's been less successful, I think is uh, an important way of increasing the relevance of the IMF's advice and analysis to countries. To improve uh, surveillance, I think a much more integrated approach has to be uh, taken. So that uh, really the country reports and the euro area report are part of the same exercise. Because what we've learned in this crisis is that development at national level can be a threat to stability of the euro area as a whole. Whether the fund is willing to be frank and fearless in its analysis and advice relies on countries essentially wanting that to happen or at least allowing the IMF to, uh, to be more frank in its analysis. What the fund uh, can bring and what the, the countries sh uh, should listen to is that they're not unique. Uh, Europe is not unique. Ultimately, the IMF is in the business of political economy not just straight economics. Policy makers operate in that space all the time. They have to take account of domestic, political and social realities. In the end, uh, I think the credibility uh, of the IMF or any other government uh, depends on a certain kind of honesty. Um, and so there are ways of telling the truth, nothing but the truth, but not necessarily in the sense of the whole truth and saying which banks are going to be going bankrupt or which banks have a problem, that there is a, a sense that uh, the combining both truth telling and discretion. And that is an extraordinary difficult task. It's not easy to manage and, and it is the fine line that I think the IMF has to, has to weave. You need to uh, still be able to tell the hard truths to policymakers.